Every couple weeks I have a backyard barbecue. I bring all the neighbors and stuff. It's a dope situation. We do comedy, barbecue, music. It's like a grown folk cookout, but we have comedy. And I use a lot of my comedian friends from around from the DMV, not the Department of Motor Vehicles. We ain't no comics from there, but the DMV, DC, Maryland, Virginia. Some people don't know that, so let me tell you that. So we always do that. We have great comics in, and it's really fun. Um, I do them about every six weeks throughout the summer at my house. We got a closed in fence so people can't see it. So it's a really a private event, sexy, grown folk comedy. My man Joe Claire, uh, since my stage is like a triangle in the corner, he called my house now, it's the triangle now. So that's why I come into the triangle to see comedy. Um, this next guest, one of my favorite people, man, as a person, man. I've known him for years. Um, when I started doing com comedy, I was a young pup, 17 years old. I used to drive around DC and I would see posters. And it was two comics that we always see two posters of, hosting a show. This guy or Tommy Davidson. Every time I would see a, a group coming in town, Anita Baker or whoever, or Luther Vandross or a rap concert, that, these two, two names are always there. I said, what the hell? I'm going to do this one day. You know, I have my name up in, uh, on some boards and some, um, some posters. So this guy came through my, um, we've been friends for 30 years. He came to my party last week. I said, man, please come through, man, grace my show. He said, I'll right, do it, man. He's a legend in comedy, man. You all know him. He's a legend through BET. Y'all might remember him from um, Rap City. He was the first host on Rap City. That's right, the first host before everyone else, before Tega, before Joe Claire, before everyone else. He was the first one. He's known as the mayor of Rap City. Give it up for the legend, the one and only Mr. Chris Tommy! Thank yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have a seat. Enjoy yourself. Have a seat. Yes, sir. Man, look at you. You're bling, blinging, and thing, thing, and well, stuff. What's happening, man? Well, let me explain this. This right, was explain. given to the honor ring of comedy. Okay. And only a few people have this. And I've been in show business for a long time. Okay. And you, and guess what? You have too. So you deserve one of these too. I was honored. I was in. Uh, well, who, who, who? Hold on. First of all, who gave you that? Guy named Chris. Chris Hustle. Okay, Chris Hustle. Fuck you, man. I could have had one, dude. Some bullshit. I've been around DC for a long time. No, but no, I respect it. I respect it. I mean, really, you know, it was surprising because I was at the venue mm -hmm. um, in Virginia and he mm -hmm. came and he mm -hmm. honored me with this. And uh, Well, you deserve it, brother. Man, Come on, man. You a legend in we DC all, comedy. We all deserve it. Well, I, I appreciate it. But no, you deserve it. You was one of the first ones in DC. Let's talk about DC, man. Let's just sit Well, back let me back. say one thing. A friend of mine named Tony Medley, okay. when I. Uh, a couple of years ago, he wanted me to be on radio in D.C., so mm -hmm. we called Radio One and got us, and he's been talking about this podcast and oh, okay. comedy hype forever, man. That's what he should. He has, and I mean, guess what? Tony, this is for you, bro, because, okay. I mean, this is an honor. Oh, well, I, well, I appreciate it. To be, to be on my show or be in comedy hype? Which one is it? Both. Oh, well, give, give me mine a little more. Right, it's the, it's the platform. <laughs> the platform yeah. that... Just imagine Richard Pryor had his platform. Sure, sure, sure. Red Fox. Sure, sure, sure. It came along at, at a good time. Uh, it did, it did. And I, I'm happy to be on Comedy Hype. They're right. good people, man. First of all, look at you, man. You still look the same, brother. I mean, you were, what you about, 92 now or something? Yeah. Because I met you at 55, you know, 90, 40 years ago. 92, four operations. Ooh, wait, they say black don't crack. No, but it will mold. Wow, wow, okay. You Black know. don't crack, but it'll mold on your ass. <laughs> you supposed to mold the people? All right, that, that's, that's, that's... Damn, I ain't never heard of that. Black don't crack, but it will mold. It will mold. Is there somebody we know that's molded? Is somebody, you know somebody that's molded? Oh, young lady I met at the strip club. She was a dancer. Oh, what? She's molded? Yeah, they had on that black light. When they brought oh. out, they were like, here she is, chocolate chip. Oh, was, hell oh, no. Lord. Chocolate chip. <laughs> a little bit molded. All right. Some people say you from D.C., but I also heard you from Bowie, Maryland. Now, for those who don't know, Bowie's on the, right on the outskirts of D.C. So, but D.C. and Maryland have a kind of a, uh, you either from D.C. to D.C. or you from Maryland. And Maryland's a little different. Real quick to tell people, D.C. is kind of a little more hood. When your family hit some money, got some money, you moved to Maryland. Or you had grass <laughs> in a backyard, and your newspapers didn't get stolen. So, that was being 100. Fuck, I lived in Well, Maryland. actually, I, I mean, for real, uh, I, yeah. I was born in, in North Carolina. Oh, was you born in North Carolina? I was born in Greensboro. Oh, okay, but, okay. And you know, I was, I'm like a late 60s baby. Okay, late so, 60s? 
Yep, throwing some salt. Yeah, I'm a late sixty baby. Well, all right. So come do, on. So doing all the things that were happening <laughs> back in the '60s, as soon as I could talk, I said, "Let's get the hell up out of here." Damn. So we moved. Uh, mm -hmm. We loaded up the truck and moved to DC. DC. What part of DC did you move into? Well, I always lived. I lived near Howard on T okay. Street, oh, okay, right around okay. the corner from Georgia Howard. Avenue. Okay, okay, off of Georgia Avenue. From okay, Howard. Okay. Then, but we basically oh, we are Merlanders. Oh. Okay. Ocean City. Ocean City. Yeah, blue crabs. My father was my father was a chemist. Was he a so, chemist? I know a lot of fathers in D.C. that were chemists. <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah, okay, well, that, that, that'll work, too. But I hear that you started out when you was eight years old. Now, you started I doing did. impressions, right? Impressions for, like, your family. I, what, was it kind of like that Eddie Murphy movie, Raw, where you, you do something in front of everybody in your family? Is that how y'all got down, or how did you start doing impressions? Well, I had a, a wild imagination. Okay. I really believed right, right, in right. Superman. What? I actually attempt to fly. I put up towel on my on around my neck right got on the on the roof of our house wow and i jumped oh and what happened i was airborne for around one second okay <laughs> i went down broke my arm and i guess the almighty he probably said this dude got to do something else he ain't gonna save the world so i'm saving the world through comedy so i started doing impressions my first voice was donald duck really donald Trump? <laughs> Okay, okay. Wow, wow, okay. All right, then. There it is. You got uh, Chris Tom, the mayor of Rap City doing Donald Duck on my show. All right, now. All right, all right. <laughs> I don't stand a fucking word you say. I said okay, panic room, damn it. Oh, oh, I couldn't hear that. That's, that's, pa that's panic room? Okay, you sound you got some chicken stuck in your throat, a duck in your throat. <laughs> All right, all right, well there it is. But all right, so you, so, but I heard you do like over two thousand impressions. I do a lot of voices. Two thousand imp impressions is a lot of people. Yeah, I do. I, don't forget, I'm I'm back in the seventies. Okay. So I'm doing the Don Cornelius. Welcome to the show, and you are. Right, 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 right. And you all are. Right, all right. You know, right. yeah, and yeah, George yeah. Burns. Hello there. Right, right. This is George Burns. Hey, by the way, I feel pretty good. You know. I don't see too many brothers doing George Burns. That's that right. A lot of. See, white folks found it amazing. No, niggas for a black, like I found it amazing. I'm for saying, a black, I'm like, well, I'm a black, anyway, so, a black kid to do white voices. Yes, John yeah. Wayne will get your black ass out of here. All right, okay, so which one was? Your, do you have a favorite impression? A couple of favorite ones, like one you like to like to do the most. Uh, Howard Cosell was probably my. I, I remember doing it. I remember for the Washington that. Redskins, mm -hmm. they used to hire me every week. Okay. And a teenager. Okay. To come down. You were a teenager at the time? A teenager. Wow, okay. I would go down to the Washington Redskins, and they would have me announce the Redskin of the week. I would go, this says Howard Kelsell, of course, let's talk about the great moments of NFL football. Dell Green, right there, the interception. All right, he all ran right. back the 40, the all 30, right. the 20. Right, And right. now he's the Redskin of the week. How did you get discovered at that young age to do that voice? Where did they hear your voices at? Well, I guess like anything, as I said, I had a wild imagination. I guess I would start mimicking people. No, but where did they hear you from? Did they come to your house? Did somebody who hired you to no, go I was in I was in junior high school. I was on the morning announcement. It got oh, me, okay. It they got heard me you a little bit morning announcements. Wow. Okay, okay, okay. So let me go back. Okay. A morning announcement with bad grades. Well, that's all right. Well, that's, that's why we're here. We, I had bad grades, and I got a show here, so we all together. Um... <laughs> So let me ask you, okay, so in D.C., so where was your first stage appearance, you know? I know it was a, young, it was a very young age. Well, high first school. Thing you stage. Uh, okay, you went on, at high school. Right, we had a she, thing called Blue and Gold. Okay. And what high, high school did you go to? High Point Senior High School. You went to High Point? Bellsville, Maryland. Oh. Shout out to uh, 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 Bellsville, uh, High Point. I went to Crossland. Okay, it's vocational school. But okay. We used to whip so, that ass. Yeah, yeah. Well, y'all had criminals on you. Everybody like 42 years old in y'all school, okay? <laughs> Shit. I had like ninth, ninth term seniors and shit. Okay, that's damn unfair. But no, so you started first in college. I mean, in high school. Okay. Right. So you, and then I saw you around DC. Right. Around 85, 86. I started seeing your posters and so forth because you were doing all the concerts. Right. Now you were at places like the Ibex. Remember the right. Ibex? That's Shout right. out to the Ibex. The Quan said, huh? The Quan said. Uh, what, what, what else? Black did you Tahiti. Do? You did the Black Tahiti? I did okay. The black. So well, how, were you, how, how old were you when you first started going to those clubs? 17. Same as me, 17 Same. years old. You, you were sneaking in. Well, I had, you know, I had, you know, you know my uh, Peter Dean and Don Brown. Okay. 
there was basically managers. I won their talent show at Strayer College when I was 17. I won $1,500. Nice, nice. And Peter Dean started, looked, liked you and started he taking said, you yeah, around? I'm going to take you around, bro. And so we was go to the clubs. That was our, that was our strategy. Okay, okay. Instead of going around to the comedy clubs or right. with a bunch of people, let's go to the clubs when they had the uh, uh, 2 o'clock, got to take the, the drinks off the table. Okay. Ask the manager, can I do some min some minutes? And I would just do impressions. I would Don't. do. Wolfman Jack was all my first voice. Right. All right, it's old Wolfman Jack, and hey, we right, have right, the Black right, Tahiti, right, right, right. and here he is next, Mr. Bill Cosby. This is Bill Cosby, and I just want to say that I don't remember. Wow. That, that's the now Bill Cosby. That's the now Bill Cosby. Yeah, that's Bill, Bill Cosby, Cosby 2021. Okay, that well, was what that we, <laughs> you seem, I don't you, remember. You seem okay. a little tense, Pierre. Do you want something to relax you? No, thank you. Um, um, no. Uh, mm -mm. All right, so you started at 17, started doing those club, right. clubs. Now, I heard somewhere that you went to New York or got pulled into New York to audition for Saturday Night Live with Eddie Murphy. Exactly. Tell me about that. I went to... How did he hear about you? How did he hear about you? Well, Peter. Peter Dean. My manager. Rest in peace. At the time. Mm -hmm. uh, he saw, oh, I guess, on, in a newspaper or something mm -hmm. that they were having auditions for okay. Saturday Night Live. Okay. And the day we went, he had appendicitis. Oh, wow. He went through all this pain. He, we drove from D.C. to New York, and that's mm -hmm. around about a four-hour drive. Mm -hmm. He was bent over, holding his appendix. Didn't know. He thought it was a simple right, okay. cramp. Right, right, sure. I went in audition for the producers, and they told me this, Pierre. They looked at me and they said, "If we didn't hire this guy named Eddie Murphy, we would have hired you." Well, hold up, hold up. So you had to do different person. What do you remember the impressions you were doing? You can just tell me the name, name you did. All right, well, man, Howard Cosell. That the, the, you right, know, the, the basic you that right. I th back then. That right. were hot and they were celebrities. Sure, sure. So Paul Lynn from Bewitch, remember Bewitch? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Remember Paul Uncle Lynn. Arthur? Yeah, I remember him. That killed him. I like roses are red, <laughs> violets are blue. Turn <laughs> Darren into a choo choo. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's okay. So hold on. So you go and meet him, and it was like in a room. You just did, did a person stand, impersonation standing up. You sat. You did some skits. I was standing was up. And okay. They were sitting at the table. Okay. You just get them started doing an impersonation. And I started doing mine. That's all I had. And, and they told no you at that time, if we hadn't hired, are we going to hire? What if we say? hadn't hired this kid named Eddie Murphy, we would have hired you. Wow. But I never went back. Well, it, why it would was, you go back, nigga? You wouldn't right, hire. Right. Well, it was good enough, but it was kind of crazy that they wouldn't want two black oh, comedians yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. on Saturday oh, yeah. Night Live. Remember, they was only one right. at a time. Sure, sure. Now it's a Garrett couple. Morris, then it's right. Eddie Murphy. Right. Right. Wow, Chris you Rock. Been, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder how you would have done on Saturday Night Live. Hmm. Hey, that That's could be interesting. interesting. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't, I, I, I never been a favor of sketch comedy. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well then, well maybe, maybe with the right way. Well, right. obviously with the right way. Look how big Eddie Murphy became. Right. And you, at, around that time, you got your thing going with Rap City. Rap City. Well, you know, I was the first comedian ever to host a rap tour. Really? What tour was fur. that? The Run DMC tour. Oh. Tougher than leather. Really. See, right, you Everything with tours came through Russell Simmons, okay. even though there was, uh, um, a, a, what's the name, um, Curtis Blow. Okay, yep. Sugar Hill Gang. Right. But it didn't boom until Def Jam came along. Okay. So Chris Rock actually turned down hosting the tour. Right. Chris Rock said he didn't want to do the tour. So they gave wow. me an audition. They right. came to town to the 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 Marriott Hotel. Okay. And I sat there and I had Ron, Jam Master J, and mm -hmm. DMC cracking up. Okay, okay. And they told me to go pack my bags. Nice. Now, this was not no club or this was. I know, like 15,000 seaters. Yeah, 15,000 seaters, right. My job was to stop Ooh. people from fighting. Hold on, hold on, okay, okay. That was I, my job. Really? My job was to keep the kids interested. He was a comedian bouncer. Yeah, so I had to I had an event. So one time I uh invented like I was a hip hop artist. 
Okay. So I had one of the S1Ws mm -hmm. from Public, Public Enemy, Enemy. Okay. and he pretended like he was a DJ, and I was come out, and I was like, A is for Apple and J is for Jack. Cinnamon toasted. It was humorous. Right, sure, But sure. we was rolling. Nice Cinnamon man. toasted Apple Jacks. You need a good breakfast, that's a fact. Started off with Apple Jacks. It's cereal, <laughs> cereal, cereal, <laughs> it's cereal. And okay. he, was, he was scratching. And right. Right. But it held their attention. Right. So, okay, well, okay. so you were the first one to do that. Let's talk about Rap City for a second, because that became right. huge. So how did you get that job to be uh, the host of uh, Rap City? Well, I was on the game show on BET, and I got a lot of fan mail. Tell me something good. Tell me something good. I was on that show. That's I didn't exactly the fan mail you got, but I got. I was on that show, too. What was that girl named? Uh, uh, Julie something? Julie Rogers. Julie Rogers. Julie Rogers. Rogers. Julie Rogers. Uh -huh. She hosted it. Yes, a lot of comedians did that. So you got a lot of fan mail. I got a lot of fan mail, and then Bob Johnson. Okay. Uh, and Jeff Lee, he was the vice president. Bob was the owner. Told me that it would take me out to California to uh -huh. do a comedy special before Comic View. Okay. Robin Harris was the host. Oh. Wow. And you ought to see. Right. You ought to see how he brought me home, though. He was like, "Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bring up the next guy. He's a comedian. He was with the group Public Enemy. Don't believe the hype. In fact, the last time I saw him, he got a standing ovation. Of oh. course, there was no chairs in the place." <laughs> That's Robin Harris doing that to you? That's what Robin Harris did. And you went up there, and it's packed. Cause I did 20 packed. minutes, and they left all the 20 minutes on the special. They didn't edit. They said it was one of the best sets they've ever seen. And what did it air on? What did it air on? Black Entertainment Television. Oh, BET? Okay, yeah, it was okay. called the BET. So, okay. And so then the people from there saw you, wanted you to host rap. How did they know what they knew a comedian? Well, that was the beginning. Shit. Right. They knew that I had toured with all the rap groups. Right. Now, don't forget me now. I was with NWA. Mm -hmm. Damn. Okay. I was with Ice T. Was I, was the tour. I was a tour all of that. MC Hammer. I did MC Hammer tour. Me guy. Uh, today. Today. I remember today. I'm gonna Damn. tell you one crazy thing. I was on tour with MC Hammer. We was at the Universal Amphitheater. So the Bloods and the Crips got to fighting. The Universal Amphitheater is in LA. Big in old LA. place. Holds about six thousand people. Okay. And they were fighting. Hold on, they were fighting in the audience? The, the Bloods and the Crips. Hell no. And I wasn't scheduled because they didn't send the paperwork. Okay. So the the manager, uh, the backstage comes comes and start yelling. Where is the comedian? Where is the comedian? We've got to stop them from fighting. What? I said, ma'am, you just said that I couldn't perform, and how in the hell I'm gonna stop a fight? She right. said, you got to say something. I went out. And I went out on that stage and I yelled, "Who's the bitch in the back with the titties hanging out?" Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> And, and believe it, they stop fighting. Oh yeah, a, a titty will stop a fight now. That's right. A titty popping out, be like, hell no. Nah. And, and the Crips and Blood stopped. They stopped. You saved the life because the titty popped out. And guess who I was a f guess who was my biggest fans after that? Prince. Hold on, Prince. He was there. Magic Johnson, James Ingram, all Hollywood was basically there. That was MC Hammer. And they came and they wouldn't let me leave. And then all oh, they kept asking me all night, what made you say that? Right, right, right. Wow. Okay, now, now I heard you toured with Prince. I did. I did some. I did the first. Was that in D.C. Okay. Tina Marie caught laryngitis. Okay. So they asked me. I was supposed to do ten minutes. Right. Tina Marie couldn't go on, so right. they asked me, "Could I do twenty minutes?" Was this Prince with the ass out? Or, uh, with the, with ass, the ass, ass out. Oh, you Contro saw the ass out. The okay. controversy tour. The early one with the G string. And right. Thing. Oh, so you saw his nuts close up. All right. right. <laughs> okay. You you, you got it. Flying Ladies. from the speakers doing splits. Yikes! With the with the with the, the dunce dunce on. Yeah, he had the little tight. What do we call them? What do they call Garden them? Leggums. Leggums. Leg leggums. Wow. Where you pull up? Yeah, that yeah, was the yeah, day. Yeah. Explain it to that camera because some women watching that. Was it a good look? It was Prince. <laughs> he gives a damn. Oh, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. So okay, okay. So working with so you know, women you, love that freaky shit anyway. Uh, of course they do, but but yeah. only he, he can get away with. It. We can't do that. Let any brother come to a club with some damn high heel boots on and ass out jeans and a perm. <laughs> you get your ass kicked up out of the club. And I'm like hell no. Nah. Oh, take take that to the bedroom like that. All right. So let me ask. You, so so did you get to do more tours with, with Prince or was that the one? I did done? a few dates. Well, how was he? How was he working with him? It was good. Was it? Did you get a chance to interact with him? Did he talk to you? Hi. Well, later on, Hi later on, he would hear me if I was performing. If he was in town, he would come. Uh, well, he would privately come, and really? they would tell me Prince is out in the audience to see you. That is dope. That is dope. I had a friend of mine who was his bodyguard that worked with him, and uh, he told me one time that I think Beyonce was performing, 
And he and he put a limo up. Is in Madison Square. No, what's not? It's not Madison Square Garden. What's the big one where they play basketball now? Uh, Barclays Center. The Barclays Center. He came and they said they had to tell everybody don't don't look at him or nothing. They opened the doors all the way from the limo all the way through. Got somebody out of his seat, two seats or whatever. He came in, sashay, sat down, watched her, and walked right on back out. Got in the limo and left. I was like, damn, that's cold blooded, boy. <laughs> Did you see any of that kind of stuff? Was he was he was he on some? Well, that time was a little different, probably. Well, the craziest tour that I was on probably was uh, how Who? Luther Vandross, how Luther Vandross, his um, band members and people that he was working from, how they used to talk about him on the tour bus. What? Behind his back? They would talk behind. Like him. what? Like what were they? It they would Luther. come on and they would have like a a case of a Coke. Okay. And everybody would hit Coca Cola. Yeah. Okay. Uh, smooth. Okay. Nose candy. Okay. <laughs> okay. No yeah. Snickers. Wow. No <laughs> Snickers. Okay. Okay. So, they, so you on the bus with them and they're saying And stuff? they used to just talk about him. They would say that and they used to go. They used to call him a turd burglar. No, sir. No, sir. Yes, they did. His band member said to him about him. Oh, it, was, it was crazy. Wow. And Cause I, I would know. always keep my distance from Luther. Really? On the tour. It was a certain reason why. Not really. Okay. You know, cause I used to do a f couple gay jokes and right. uh, they used to always say, "Well, don't really don't do them on the show and stuff." Like I said, "Well, they ain't really bad." It, right, the right. joke was, "I wonder what kind of dreams gay people have." Okay. You ever heard that? No. I said they wake up in the middle. They wake up in the middle of the night and it's Billy D. Williams. Hi, Billy. Oh, wow. Are you gonna do me? I'm gonna tear that butter yours up. <laughs> Wow, okay. And Luther didn't mind that joke. It was, it's just a joke. Right, but well, you know, some people... It's just imagine what... All right, what kind of dreams? I done had a wet dream, right, so... Right, right, right. Well, you know what? You're right, because we're talking 30 years ago. Now that wouldn't fly. They, I know it wouldn't. They turn everything upside down. It's cancel culture. Right. Um, mm -hmm. um, well, now, that was that was interesting. You went out with... <laughs> but you went out with people like Stevie Wonder. Uh, Switch. Uh, went with Switch. That's my group. That's my group. Bar right Kays, Okay. Cameo. Really? Wow. Now, how'd you get to do all those tours? How'd you get to do all those well, tours? I had good managers, Tiger Flower. Remember Tiger Flower? I didn't remember that group. Yeah, that, not that, that management company. Not just another concert, but an event. Right, from, right. So they were the promoters of, they were the first one that took the chance on the Run DMC tour. Okay. And okay. they made they they made $25 million wow. off the Run DMC tour. So, so through all, see, I was there when I, I was on the Heavy D tour, and I was there when his dancer, Trouble T. Roy. Yeah, I, I heard. He, okay, so look, look, this mm -hmm. is what I heard. This is how I, I'm gonna tell right. the story that I heard. You tell me the story that happened. Okay. I heard real quickly that yeah, they were like on some rafters at, between a show, working like messing around, t playing with each other, <clears> and one <throat> fell off. The, my man Troy, T. Roy, what is it? Fell off the thing and no. he broke. No, that's not how it happened. No, that's not how all it right. happened. Now you hold on. You were there, there, or you heard about? I it? I was the host. But the were you there when it happened, when the accident happened? I saw him fall. Okay, so hold on. Okay, who was on tour at the time with you? Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Okay, Fresh Prince. Heavy D. Heavy D and the boys. Public Enemy. Public Enemy, okay. EPMD. EPMD. I think Salt and Pepper was on the tour, too. Tupac was on the tour? Yeah, he do Digital Underground. Oh, Digital Underground. Digital Underground was I on there too. Yeah, okay. yeah, cause they were buddies. Him and Trouble Tree Roy, they was buddies. Okay, okay. So set set the scene. So where were we at with this? When where so, this happened at? What we, city? Were, we were outside on the back of Market Square Arena. That would be Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Okay, okay. So there's a loading dock. You got to okay. go around the back of the building, and uh -huh. you got to go up this ramp. Okay. So they was playing this game. They were throwing this ball, and if you drop the ball, they hit on you. Oh wow. Okay. And they kept playing. Then Trouble Tree Roy. He decided he wasn't gonna play, so he got. He was. Let's suppose this is the ramp, right? Okay. So he's up on the ramp, sitting this way. There's no back support. If, okay. if you go, you see if if I was a little man, right, right, and I fell from here, right, you can see what kind of damage. How far was, was the distance from about th three stories, four you stories? Could, it was over a traffic light because you could see over the traffic light. Oh, wow. The traffic light's about at least 22 stories, so at least two stories. So we're talking about three, four stories. Okay. Right. 40 feet. Ooh, Lord. Okay. So one of the managers took one of the trash cans with the wheel on it and pushed it down the ramp. Okay. It turned towards Trouble T-Roy. Who was sitting on Who was sitting on the ramp. Okay, sitting on the it ramp. It was like Final Destination, bro. Because he was hurt early that 
that week, with a, he had pulled a chest muscle. Okay. So he had to stand in oh, wow. for him. So when he puts the trash can, the trash can was coming down the ramp. Uh-huh. And he lifted his legs up. To lift the trash can go underneath it. Yeah. And he was gone. No. So everybody ran and looked. And we were looking down, and uh, we saw him try to get up. And then he collapsed. Wow, wow, wow. So wow. next minute, we're at the hospital. Tupac is sobbing, bro. It was crying. So, I mean, oh. hey, brother, it can't get no better with it. And many tears, he could have filled a cup or a bucket. Really? He was crying, and Flavor Flay was, because the doctor said his eyes was wide open. Oh, T-Roy. He was, his okay. eyes right on. His head, he had cracked his skull. Right. Was he cognizant of it or was he, or he just like frozen? Nothing. Oh, just eyes were Gone. Open. Wow, okay. Still breathing. Right. Flavor was walking around. Yo, man, come on, Trouble G. Roy. Wake up, man. Come on, man. I'll give you $100. Okay. Okay, well, that's something. So everybody was just trying to say, they said, talk to him, talk to him, right. talk to him. Heavy D was out on the, on the curb at the emergency room and he was like, what am I gonna tell this kid's mom? That's wow. all he kept saying. And uh, that was basically the beginning of the tour and that was the end of the tour. Well, damn. Well, damn. It had just actually really started. Yeah, I just done a couple of dates. Yeah, we was about to do around about 40 dates. Wow, what year was this? What was this about? It was in the... Um, 91, 92, something like that? I think about that, right? It's in, around about that time. Wow. You know, as you get older, you forget the years. No, no, I feel you. Wow, wow. You remember when your babies were born and when child support came? I ain't never no. forgot that. Okay, you won't forget that. Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so let me ask you. So there's a lot of crazy stuff that happened on tours like that. Right. Um, <clears throat> you said, um, I heard uh, you had a little hangout running with my man Will Smith, you know, because I heard y'all had girls and fun and parties and stuff. You know, y'all were young before y'all got married and stuff like that. Well, Will, Will is basically who helped me, who helped Rap City evolve. Okay. Um, every night after the tour, me, Will Smith, and, and DMC and Flavor Flay would always talk. Nice. Okay. Nobody else. Oh, okay. Back that at the was hotel or back at the venue? Like where? Like, just, back at the hotel. Okay. This was no. the boys' club. Okay. Oh, nice. And we would always sit around and talk. So once I was hosting Rap City, um, Will kept seeing the teleprompter, and they kept writing some crazy, crazy mm -hmm. shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, the teleprompter was like, what's up, homies and homettes? Oh, my God. Oh my God. And Will didn't like that. He was like, we went to a commercial. He was like, what are y'all doing to Chris? And it was like, excuse me? Said, what are you doing to Chris? He knows hip hop. Right. He, he travels with us. So after that, that's when they, I wasn't gonna say nothing because I had just started. Sure, you're yeah, sure. I'm not gonna get job, fired right? off of no goddamn teleprompter. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so they started asking me, um, what do you wanna do now? I said, well, I, I don't really wanna be on this set. I want to go on in location. Right, right, right. I want to pretend like I'm a James Bond one day. I want to play like a patrician. I want to pretend like I'm a doctor. So he really helped open up the doors for Rap City and comedy. Now this don't is after y'all right. This is after y'all toured together, or just after we tour together. Right. But don't forget, comedy and they they already didn't think that hip hop was gonna last. Right. But to put comedy and hip hop together. Right. I didn't know the impact that people had with Rap City until I traveled. I remember Will I Am. Mm -hmm. I remember one day Jamie Foxx had a party, so I'm looking. I know it's Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas, mm -hmm. and he just keeps staring at me. Okay. And he was just looking and looking, and and people were telling me their stories, like Ruben Stutter. I used to run home and watch you on TV. Mm -hmm. He said, not really particular to videos because y'all would show the same videos over, mm -hmm. but I want to see what you were going to do today. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You, you know, so mm -hmm. it kind of had an impact. You never knew where Rap City. It may not have lasted 20 years. It may have went off the air. Sure. But they gave me an opportunity to put comedy with hip-hop 
And I don't know if it'll ever be duplicated again. It won't be. But I want to hear more about the tours, the fun of the tours. I <laughs> toured all my life, and I had some wild fun times <laughs> in touring. Nigga, we talked. You know some fun shit on tour. Now, tell me some funny stuff. I heard that you tell me Big Daddy K and Slick Ray had it was a shootout. Yeah, so yo, yeah one day they pull out guns on each what other. Tour? This was part of that same tour? Part one of them. One of them. One of them. Okay, one I of them. I did several tours. Okay, why did Big Daddy Kane pull out a gun on Slick Rick? Well, when I saw the, when I saw the gun, I kind of backed off. Well, that makes sense. I, mean, I, I kind of like, I guess they'll figure it out. Wow. But I used to have a tour all the time, me and Jamie Foxx. Okay. Me and Jamie used to have a good time, you know. Uh, the group Guy. You remember okay. the group Guy? Now, yeah, that yeah. was a crazy group. Can we tell me something about that tour? <laughs> well, they used to get hotel rooms, three hotel rooms apiece. Oh, hold on. Who got? Oh, each member? Teddy, Aaron Hall. Oh, yeah, Aaron Hall. And Crazy Legs. That nigga. Oh, I don't know who Crazy Legs That was his brother, but oh, okay. Okay. one Damien. of the. Damien, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I get it. Three rooms. They used to get three rooms everywhere they went. Not three rooms for. Three different rooms. Oh, each one had three different rooms. Well, they used to, you know, do that dude with the honeys. Ooh-wee! Until one day, <laughs> until one day, and he's a friend, but one day he caught some shit. Oh, yeah. And the doctor came on the tour bus and looked at all of us and said, Pill it up. Who's been around Aaron? Well, <laughs> <laughs> he had to get a shot at his neck. Hell, really? Damn. Not the ass? Okay. No, in his neck. Well, okay, okay. Well, that, well, yeah. Well, well, Aaron even talks about it, boy. He talked about how back in the days. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he, was. I eat, oh, yeah. Oh, he yeah. was eating out at the diner. Uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. You heard about it. You heard got about bad it. food that day. Really? That's what it was. Eating at the diner, got bad food. <laughs> My man Will Smith was freaky. He had oh. some parties. He had well, some can parties. I? Well, can I? Can what? I tell you this? All right. Tell me what you want. So we was on tour with Run DMC and Will one day. He had these young lady, Spanish, Latino. <laughs> They was following the tour. From city to city? From city to oh, yeah, tour. Oh, and it was giving everybody some head. Let's right, get right, it that right. right. Yeah, right. I'm happened. the only right. one they didn't give no head. And why would they give you no and, head? Well, they did eventually. Oh, okay. Oh, Will, Will brought him down to my hotel room. Sweet. And he was like, knock, knock, knock. I opened the door. He said, man, I got some young ladies that got some uh, who's uh, really good with their mouth. I said, what's their rap style? <laughs> he said, they ain't rappers. <laughs> So uh, he said, oh, you know, she's going to give you some head, and I'm going to watch. Whoa, hold on, hold on. <laughs> like, look at it while it's happening. Well, I guess he thought I was a pawn, you know, a porn star. All right. Well, okay, so, okay. so I told him he couldn't watch. I said, you can't watch. You can go in the bathroom, and you can count the three. <laughs> what the hell that mean? And by that time, she's just having it in her mouth. <laughs> and you done caught me. So he would come out and laugh. <laughs> that so that, that's our little story that we always joke about. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, man, when we were young, man, we did a lot, did a lot of wild stuff on the road, too, man. We you were know, young. Man. Hell, yeah, we were young. We do stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it was what it was. Now, you know, I see Rap City was pretty big, and also MTV Jams was big. I mean, MTV Raps. Raps. Your, your MTV Raps. Rap. Your MTV Raps, right. Well, well the, the competitive nation, uh, uh, nature of that show and our show is they didn't play all the black hip-hop. That's we right. the one who took it to the next level. Y'all took the real, real black hip hop. Yeah. And Dr. Right. Dre and Fat Fire Lover and um, Ed, uh, Dr. Dre and Ed Lover. Right. They didn't do no comedy. They was just mm-hmm. sitting there mm-hmm. introducing videos and doing interviews. Right. Right. I took it to another level. Mm. I actually, one day we had Big Daddy Kane, and they said Big Daddy Kane don't do no talking. What? Oh, no so, interview. No, no interview. interview. Oh, wow, okay. So I, you remember the phones that you used to carry? Sure. I had one of them, and I had somebody to call it. And I picked up the phone, and I said, hello? Yeah, he's here. <laughs> so I had the Big Daddy Kane, and he just bust out laughing, that and he funny. opened up. Right, that is funny. Wow, so you got Big Daddy Kane to do one of the first I got interview. him to talk, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got stories. I don't you know. <laughs> uh, I met him one time. Him and his dancers, Scoop and Scrap Lover, whatever. They were at Jim Brown's house playing basketball. And uh, up in the Hollywood Hills, and they were really cool. But yeah, Big Daddy Kane was, yeah, he cheating on basketball. Yeah, he, 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 I think he left hand. He was a hell of a left hander, but uh, you better rap it than a sing, than a ball player. You know? I don't think tours is ever gonna be like the ones that I experienced. Oh no, 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 no. You know, as All I said, tour, I huh? go back to the barcades and cameo and switch, and 
I mean, I, it's unbelievable, man. Right, 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 I mean, right. But the fun part was riding on the tour buses. Oh, without a doubt. Because just the motion of the bus, uh -huh. I mean, me, bruh man, um, and some uh, Mike Blackston, we went on a tour. So every time I wanted to go to sleep, one more control controls all the TVs. Oh, okay. I always put it on the car. They already knew who had the remote control because I always put it on a Cartoon Network. Really? Just so I could go to sleep. <laughs> well, that, that worked. But you did a bigger tour there. And I didn't see you on the TV, but the Kings of Comedy. The Kings of Comedy now, was. you said you was on the first one? I was on the, the first host? one. Really? I was the host. But I, I didn't see you. Like, like, how long did that last? Like, I mean, how many shows you do? I did around about 15 dates with the Kings of Comedy. That's and, legit. Right, and you didn't do any more because? I, I had a buddy man who went, okay. They came to D.C. and he was on the, uh, we, they gave us a, a limo okay. for 24 okay. hours for three days. Okay, nice, nice. And he just kept messing with the limousine driver. I told him, I said, man, leave him alone. I said, man, I'm going to hear about this in the morning. Limousine driver said, no, nah, he didn't do nothing. So Walter Lathan calls me and he said, who, man. Who run Kings of Comedy for the who, who, yeah, who, producer of it? He said, what happened? I said, what you mean? I'm like, hey, man, the limousine driver said that Somebody kept messing with him. I said, yeah, that was my boy. He would say, no, it was you. What? He, he said, blamed you? He blamed me. He said, because if you hanging out with people like that on such a great production that we have, it was you. And wow. that was kind of the end. And then later on, I end up being on the, through him again, through right. the P. Diddy's Bad Boys of Comedy. So so he got rid of, so Walter Lason got you off the tour. I think that's when Guy took over. Well, it was kind of, because my manager was, was a promoter too. Okay. And he kind of, I guess he kind of went at like, hello man, you know Chris wouldn't do, right, wouldn't sure, do this. Right, sure, sure. He said, well, yo, he messing with somebody that I'm hiring and his buddy has no reason. If he in a limo, please don't act like you hired a limo. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of end of it. I think I did the next year, they came to DC and they let me host it. Okay, okay. But after you did, was that, that how Guy Toy got the job? Because I remember Guy Toy doing it. Well, I think it. he was kind of, I mean, everybody was up trying to get that job. Oh, okay, well, I remember with, Guy Toy for a while. Yeah. And, and, and I think, I, no, Steve Harvey started, no, Steve Harvey was a tour first, and then he couldn't follow, let's say. Uh, no, don't tell you what no, happened. That's right, he ended it. Don't tell you what happened. Right. I, they used to give me 15 minutes. Okay. And I took the best of Chris Thomas, and Ooh. I put it on that stage. And by the time I did the fashion show, you see me do the oh, fashion oh, the show? The handicap one? Yeah. That's funny. I do multiple. Uh, people who bow legged, one bow leg, right, right. blind person, and by the time I hit that, it was over. Mm. The laughter. What people don't understand the intensity of laughter. It can be Bernie Mac. Every time he used to come out on Kings of Comedy, right. I couldn't even listen to his joke because his opening had me rolling. Okay. When the music used to play, he was like, right. "Cut the music, Chuck, right. Chuck, <laughs> Chuck, cut the motherfucker music." <laughs> Chuck would cut the music. He was like, "Excuse me, everybody." That's my wife's cousin. I can't seem to shake that motherfucker. Oh, shit. And that right there would have me rolling. I'm done. 10 minutes, I'm done. My stomach already worked out. Okay, okay. Well, damn, there it is. All right. All right, so the Kings of Comedy, you've done a lot of stuff. Right. It, um, you've toured all over the, over the world, overseas. Right, I've been overseas. You've had uh, um, I to, to be honest, I'm an American type of guy. I, I mean, me and... Me and Martin Lawrence, right. Sinbad did the uh, work, the the World Jazz Festival. Okay, and that didn't turn out too good. And Cole Martin, who was on stage, and he said, "How do you say fuck you what? in Mexican?" Oh hell no! <laughs> in Mexican? Okay, and Spanish is good too, but all right. And they had to sneak him out of the country. Right, 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 right. But that Damn. was the end of that. He did. He said, "How do you say fuck you in Mexican?" Mm -mm. Okay, okay. Let me ask you something. So all, with all the success you had, Chris, now here's a question I want to know. With all the success that you've had, and let me tell you, we looked up to you, we still look up to you in D.C., all the young comics have. Why didn't you ever go to Hollywood? Like, you still, like you stayed in D.C. all the time. Did you ever want to go to Hollywood, or why didn't you do the Hollywood move like everyone else did? Because I was, when I was young, mm -hmm. uh, I went to the comedy store, and they offered me a contract. In L.A.? Yeah, the first oh, time. Oh, so you did go to L.A.? Yeah, time. I went there, okay, and they ahead. offered me a contract. Mitzi, she told me, she said, sign this, and you can't leave. I said, oh, yeah? I said, let me, let me walk out the door for a minute. I called my mom, and my mom said, uh, I said, Mom, I just got offered a contract at the famous comedy store. She said, be a man, boy. 
I said, okay, I'm coming home. <laughs> really? I did. Man. That was my exact words. I'm coming home. Why, why did you want to stay? If you ever been to Los Angeles, it's, it's almost like being in a movie. Okay. Every, everybody is an actor. Right. And I just wasn't feeling. Now, I was asked to play Bernie Mac's brother. On you can show? Act, you can ask Chris Rock because they was doing that movie. Uh, uh, Head of State. Head of State. Mm-hmm. And he asked me to come over to uh, Baltimore, and he wanted me to play his brother. Oh, okay. Jamie Foxx constantly gets on me. He said, well, why don't you move to L.A.? Yeah. And he always, his, his, his thing is, well, I live in Tyra, Texas, but I make my money in California. Okay. I was asked back in the day I could have did some episodes on the Fresh Prince. Wow. Wow. I could have did, but Rap City kind of put me in a little historic. Right, sure, sure, sure. And I'm happy with that. Okay. okay. You know I mean, look at a lot of those artists. I could be Uncle Uncle Bernie's brother. Right, sure. But then I may not ever get another role to do anything. Okay. You know? Well, that's true. That's true. Do you have do you have any regrets of, of, of things you didn't do, should have done, maybe should have did? Nope, never will. Okay. Because I'm still doing it. Oh, hey, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm still doing it. it, it Life is a never-ending story. Okay. That's and it ain't, the book ain't closed till you gone. Damn. And that's the end of the story. All right, well, well the book opens up here on P.S. Panic Room, and it's going to close in about another 20 minutes. Shit. <laughs> 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 but no, man, look, uh, you a legend at home, man. Well, you're a legend all over, but especially at home, D.C. I mean, you are probably the pinnacle D.C. community. You know what I hate when they say, say to me? What? They call me the mayor of D.C. Rap City. Right. They always yeah, call him Mayor Bear? Well, yeah, that's what they always Mayor say. Bear. They they, the they consider life. Marion Barry the mayor of DC, but here they, here I am. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, introduce the mayor of DC. I was like, oh no, no, the mayor of Rap City, though. That, so that, you that want me be... to say that bitch set me up. <laughs> no. No, man, but no. <laughs> hey, you know funny, I just went I was on the road with you like a month ago. You still yes. killing it, man. You still funny. I told you, man. I'd be cracking. I'd be in tears. I ain't bullshit. I'm in tears watching you, man, because you just, you just don't care. I mean, you, you, you might care. No, I don't no, know, but you. Like you. you don't care. I'm gonna just tell everybody. I've been knowing Payer for a long time. We 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 haven't worked a whole lot together, mm-hmm. but we did this tour and we was outdoor outdoor event. Oh my god, so funny. Outdoor event is one of the hardest. There's no band, just music. But you were so consistent. You rode and you was killing them. He was he was true. consistent. True, true, true. And the one thing about you don't let people rattle you. No, no. Where you walk off stage, and we both have some connection to David Chappelle. Yeah. Now I was the first guy to introduce David Chappelle on stage when he was fourteen. Oh, well, okay, okay. So this is what I said. His mother came to the comedy club. She said, "Young man, can you introduce my my son on stage? He's 14. I'm looking at him, going, "You know what? This kid should be home, getting ready to go to school." It's a Sunday damn night. Right, sure. It's almost nine o'clock. Sure. I call his mama Mama Damas. Mama Damas. Yeah, because like she that. saw the future. Right, sure, sure. So I, I introduced David. I said, ladies and gentlemen, here's a young man that's 14 years old, and you never know, he might be our next biggest star. And that was my intro. And you see what he says about you. Yeah, he called me great, which you know, right. which, which which makes sense. Well, accolades from any from yeah, any of your p- your peers and your. I'm great now, you know, yeah. but you are too. But you a legend, man. You OG legend. You what does legend mean? mean? That's what I want to know. Y'all, no, no, no. y'all expect like I'm gonna was, die tomorrow? No, no, no. You was a tour. You saw Prince's ass and his ball sack. You you beat <laughs> out. You damn near beat out Eddie Murphy. And you, you know what I'm saying? You got kicked off of tours. You was on tours. You saw people dying and shit. That's legendary shit. That's what they call Paul Mooney. You know that motherfucker, right? You know what that motherfucker said. <laughs> no, man, but I. So, <laughs> you know you ain't gonna say that about me, Pierre. No, I'm not gonna let man. you say that. You a legend. I don't give a damn. So, uh, okay. So I heard you have some. You have a radio show going out. Talk about the radio show. I have a TV show a in TV DC. Show. Kind of helped me through the uh, the pandemic. Okay. Um, What's it called? Look, it's called Comedy Corner Extra. Comedy Corner Extra in DC. At night. At night, okay, nice little long title. Okay, Comedy Corner Extra <laughs> at night with Chris Thomas. Right. Okay. And what it is just a regular show. Uh, since I know a lot of people, I play their videos and. Okay. Just kind of keep it. I got to get you on the show and. Okay. But and then I had a radio show. Okay. Of course, after the pandemic, they want me to start doing it uh, mm-hmm. at home, and I was like, hell no. Right. And because there, there was no way I could make money. Right. 
You know, I've done, done a few things. You know, go-go sure, music. Sure. Go-go music is the music of D in, in D.C. Right, sure, sure. So a lot of people didn't know I was the first comedian ever to do a record with the group EU, the one that did the record. Doing the butt? The butt. I did a record with them, too. Oh, okay, I called know Called Somebody's Ringing That Doorbell. Man. And you wonder why they call you a legend. Really? No, really? Okay. Come on with that, man. Look. All right, well, look. How can people follow you on social media, too, man? I want to know that, too. Um, you on social media. Chris Thomas. Chris Thomas Show. I don't really do a lot of, you know, back in the day I had around 60 million people who watched the show for all those years, so. You've been on, let me tell you, you've been on IG sometime because we do a thing here called IG Creeping. That means I go on your IG page, homie, and I go I had somebody running, I don't know what the hell they saying. Oh, really? I don't. All right, so you're trying to tell me you don't remember this picture right here? Hell no. That was me back in the day. Well, that, that's Al B. Shouldn't. Right <laughs> okay, okay. You shouldn't be doing that. You're not yeah, that was, hey, that was a profile no. that got me Rap City. And you had the weight lift, the weight lift the, uh, charm. Oh, Come man, on, you want to say I was big and buff. I used to do 500 push-ups a day. Is that what you were doing? I used to. Yeah, okay. Push up from your waist <laughs> on up off a girl don't count. But uh, look at the jacket, though. The, the ja that's oh. straight up. Chest oh, King. that's back. Chest, uh, People wearing tur uh, uh, tore up jeans. True, yeah, and that's true. But yeah. that was... Look, they had Carl Payne, everybody auditioned for Rap City. Well, you, I say that that look got me the job. That's the look right there? That was uh, the one. Boy, look, you could have been on a Duke bag, a Duke hair product uh, box right there. Boy, look at you. And you see them lips? Well, no, no, I don't want to see that, but I see, <laughs> I see the shirt. I see, I see the scratched up. Well, that ain't the only picture because you was, you know, you was hanging with the rappers and you was hanging, you know, you was hanging with some fly folks. Right, you right. Know what I'm saying? And you had, hell no. What that's about back that in the, that's. What the, what the. He was around about 18 then. Now, though. now he like, he working out. You look like you just have a sweatsuit on, okay? You let like your chest go in, man. You, you, you work out at a time? I was asking what, what kind of rap should I do on stage? That was one of those <laughs> concerts. That was one of those Run DMC concerts, the uh, Def Jam concert. Is that what, look how, that was what, backstage, too. What year was that, like 88 or something? Look how young, young, uh, look how young. Hello, Might have been 64. <laughs> 64. I'm only playing Good with Good Lord, have mercy. That was in the 80s. Wow, man. You are a true legend, brother. <laughs> you are little. And see, look at all the gold. Look at all the gold he got. Look at all the gold. And, then, and look at my little bing. one. <laughs> bing. <laughs> bing bong. That's all good, though. But no, man, that's, that's legendary, brother. That is legendary, man. I'm, I'm proud to know you, brother. I appreciate yes, you for coming on my show. All right, before you get out here, we do a little thing on my show. Let me show you. All right. What happens is on my show we do a little thing we call spin the wheel. Mm -hmm. You gotta spin it, and on the wheel it got some things on there. If it lands on it, you gotta kind of do it, okay? okay. So I'm gonna tell you. One might land on lost your virginity. You gotta tell us how you lost your virginity. Okay. You remember back then? Um, let's go with celebrity crush. So if you have a crush on a celebrity, mm -hmm. what you do is you pick it, take your phone and you make a call to that that that, 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 that celebrity. You say like, Hey, Rihanna, what's up? You got about two minutes to get her to come over to your house and get some booty or you to go to her house to get so some booty. So you want me to tell you about that? Yeah, yeah, but when you pick the phone, you have to make a phone call to that celebrity if it lands on that. You know, you, you pick the phone and say, hello, hey, Rihanna, what's oh, up, girl? Oh, okay, I'm going to pretend. You know, you, I love, yes, exactly. Okay, okay, How you, I want to see your macking skills. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we have a sexual passage from a book that you got to read, the male version, you got to read the, the story of it. Um, who you trade your trade places with? What's your biggest lie? You can, you can probably tell any of the stories you just told me. Repeat them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, <laughs> um, Hater. Uh, yeah, Hater. I, right, exactly. That's what I do here. But um, so, yeah, oh, your biggest secret, you know, or you spend again and another book passes. So why you got to pass the money? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> ain't going to pass the money. Uh, no, don't worry. We, we got the money for you, too. Got an envelope with <laughs> some money on. So you spend it. And wherever okay. it land, you gotta do it. All right. So you spin it yourself. You, you move, okay. reach over and spin it over. Hold on. We, we, we give you a drum roll. We everybody get a drum roll for you. Hold on, give a drum roll. Spin it hard. Put some little imp into it. And let's see where it is. Where it gonna land? Gonna put it. Ah! Uh, call the last. No, do it one more time. Uh, yeah, we, we don't have that. No, that's it. That's it. You gonna call back the last person you did, and you had to tell me you want to take him. You want to take yeah, him out dinner? Call her. You can. Yeah. All right. Call the last person you talked to on the phone. And you want to you want to tell her you want to take her to get some hot wings, okay. and you want blue cheese, and tell her what everything everything you want her to pay for when you take when she takes you out. Hello. This is I ain't long to get hard with. <laughs> you know who that is? What's happening? Yeah, I'm here on the uh, panic room with Pierre, and I'm trying to explain to him about. 
me and you were the last lovers. Are we going to see each other tonight? No, not tonight. I'm going to be out of town for the next month. I'll call you when I get back. But I want to take you out to dinner. Going to get you some wild wings. Okay. What kind of dip do you like? A ranch. All right, we're gonna get you that. We're gonna get you a big size, so you can have that white stuff all over your mouth. And I'm gonna take a picture of you, and you're gonna lay next to me. All right, people are gonna wonder what it is. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Wow, you're going to have a hard time with her. Give it up for Chris Thomas. <laughs> Yo, Chris, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, man, brother. You are a comedy legend, man. <laughs> Those of y'all, hey, you can see him on social media, man. Again, I enjoy it. Thank you so ha for having me on the show. Thank Yo, you. Y'all heard the stories. You've you seen the man, the myth. He's here right now. Follow him on social media. Hey, every week how we do, we have a great guest, man. This is no different, man. I appreciate y'all watching PS Panic Room every week. Tell your friends, share it. The numbers are rising up, so I appreciate y'all watching, y'all. Leave the comments in the message now. There you the comments, because we're going to read some of them comments, okay? Again, man, thank y'all so much. Don't forget you can follow me at Comic Pierre on all social media platforms. And like I said, what you're watching right now, man. I appreciate it again, y'all. Love y'all, and I will holler at y'all later. I'm out. Turn me up a little bit. Turn me up a little bit. If you like that show like subscribe and comment below you know hit the, hit the notification bell hit the subscribe button man we want you around appreciate it <laughs>